A lot of uh, questions coming in about online share trading. We have done uh, shows on this before, but based on uh, your requests, we, we're going to revisit this. And we're joined this evening by uh, Gusto Benikos, the CEO of FNB Share Investing, Duncan Ingram, the COO at EBSA Stockbrokers, and joining us from our bureau in Cape Town, Mark Meyer, the uh, business development manager at Shenet. Uh, gentlemen and lady, uh, good evening. Kalimera, Kalimera, is <laughs> Kala. No, I'm not Greek, my ex is. <laughs> oh, oh, no, I thought I was being more kind and being nice to you. <laughs> well, we can say good evening. Good evening. Yeah. The uh, online share trading. This is, this is now starting to take off. Pe people are getting interested in this because it is a cheaper option of, of trading. Most definitely, Jeremy. I think specifically for, for F&B, we've decided to go the share investing route, mm -hmm. which subtly hints towards a more longer view rather than your traditional broking services. And without a doubt, the uptake of the opening of share investing accounts as well as the buying of shares as well as Kruger Rands have just phenomenally increased over the last few months. Well, I mean, you can see the price of Kruger Rands has gone through the roof it's, in the last few months. It has catapulted and yeah. it's still going. And still going, yeah. Um, you, from an EBSA point of view, you, you guys, uh, what, what's your uptake being like on this? Um, well, we've been going a lot longer. We've been in the online share trading business since 2004. Okay. Um, our growth has slowed this year with market turmoil. Having said that, earlier this month, we have seen a sharp increase in uptake once again. So it's very much dictated by market conditions. Um, Mark, just to come to you, um, the, this whole thing about market conditions, the, there obviously is a link between the two, the, the, the amount of trades and the condition of the market at the time. Um, yeah, we do find the same thing um, at, at ShareNet and our CFD platform specifically. Um, we find that when the markets are roaring, um, guys are interested in signing up. And uh, when the markets are volatile like they are now, um, the, the trades definitely lessen and not as much interest. One of the, one of the emails that we got in, uh, this one was from uh, Roshan Sugrash, um, saying he watched a program on costs involved in investments on the show a few, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, he said, for the average person that's spending about a thousand rand a month to buy shares using my EBSA trading account, there's one of your yeah. clients already, um, I pay about 15% on costs for the single transaction. This, I believe, is very high. I know if you trade large amounts of money on shares, the cost is lower, but not everybody can afford investing large sums of money at one go. Where, where are we sitting with costs here? Okay. Um, our brokerage is 0.4% of the value with a minimum of 120 Rand, and that's what's killing the the client in this particular case. What we would advise there is that the client doesn't trade a thousand rand at the time. He builds up his cash until he's got 10,000 rand or even 5,000 rand, then transacts and that will bring down his transaction costs as a percentage. I remember a, a few years ago, Gusta, mm. when I was still on radio, yes. I did a share investing portfolio a, Competition. It was just competition that I, that I did on air. And I found exactly what we're talking about here, that you can't trade on a, a weekly basis. You've, you've, got to, you've got to make your call and you've got to stick to it. And I think a lot of people who've been on this show have always said, if you're going into shares, it's not for the short, short term, it's, for, it's, it's, it's for a long term, term thing. And I think that's what a lot of people forget. Um, I think if I could tag on to that, the, the share investing product that we have, we have uh, two legs to it, the share builder and share investor. Now the share builder we've tailored specifically for this type of client to make your smaller trades a lot more economical. Um, so for a share builder customer, a trade of between two and a half and five grand will be quite economical because we've actually, we bulk those trades and we charge a 
all inclusive fee of, of two percent and it's a very specific strategy for us we are we operate under broker license but we are not brokers and we've also built it into our non-banking so I think from that point of view we also would encourage exactly what Duncan is saying create a vehicle where you save monthly towards that first lump sum buyment that you can do um, be it in in unit trust if you do have a longer view or in other investment vehicles Mark from your point of view are you uh, how are people finding the vehicle um, through which they want to trade? Is it, is it generally through their bank or are they looking outside their, their, own, uh, uh, their own bank? Well, Jeremy, the banks obviously comes with its advantages. Um, if you're wanting to move uh, funds in and out of the accounts uh, quickly, that's uh, highly convenient. Um, having said that, though, um, a client should consider um, other variables as well. You're looking at what sort of information is being provided um, on top of uh, the trading platform. The trading platform itself, what functionality does it lend the client? Um, you know, what instruments are being offered on the, on the platform? There's a lot of things to consider. Statistically, I'm told, I may be wrong here, but I'm told that statistically only about 2% of South Africans manage their own money. Um, if that is the case, would this be a way of trying to increase the amount of people who, who are managing their own money through online share trading? Or is it, is it just too risky? Um, Jeremy, I wouldn't say it's too risky, but... Of course you wouldn't, because you run it, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, but I think there's a need for financial education. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to lag behind the world in that in South Africa. Uh, people need to understand and, and brokers talk about school fees when investing and that's the the price you pay to gain that knowledge um, but there are sufficient products out there when investing even on the JSC like your Satrix where you can minimize your risk mm. would you would you go along with that mark and I'm going to come to you in a moment and ask you the same question because so would you go along with that saying that people should start looking at things like Satrix 40, Satrix Finney, Satrix Divi as a, as a start-up engine for their, for their online investment. I think, I think in absence of wanting to go stock specific, I think the principle is definitely to look at the, the possibility of removing those hurdles and that perceived risk. And I think it is the way that we portray information to customers that will give them the opportunity to maybe at a different level, at a graphic level, um, make decisions rather than on PEs and yield curves and all those things. So I, I think it's, talking about now, you see. Um, yeah. those are the things we don't want to do. Exactly. So we want to do it graphically, we want to do it simple. Our approach to our base, which is really creating a new market, people that have never invested before, is very simple. It says, which are the products that you buy on a day-to-day -day basis? And if you believe that there are enough other people buying those same products, that would create profit for that company. And in return, it is a safe um, a, a assumption to make that over time you would get your investment back should you invest in that company. So we're taking a very much a retail look at it rather than putting the numbers down and uh, spreadsheets and, and even getting onto the whole you know, education workshop centre. We, we're putting it online for people to absorb, but in a very, very consumer friendly thing. And I think that is why we're seeing the market growing. We are attracting new first time investors. They start small with a limited basket. They then suddenly get that confidence kicks in and we see them migrating to the, to the product that's share investing where you can um, basically invest in any share. So it's really about taking away the hurdle. A lot of our clients have a lot of money but they made it through being dentists. They made it through being um, restauranteurs. They have they no idea the market. what the markets yeah. are about, what derivatives are, what CFDs are. Mark, would you go along with that um, saying that you, you either go for the sort of broad-based uh, shotgun approach and, and take, take on the, the sort of Satrix 40s um, before you move into stock, specific stocks? Um, but I, I, having said that, I do quite like Gusta's um, suggestion there that, you know, I buy bread uh, every second day, I buy milk every second day, so maybe I should be investing in a Tiger Brands and a Clover, for example. What's your feeling on it as a, as a well, start up? On the Satrix uh, question, it's a great place to start. It's um, um, cost effective, you're getting uh, diversification immediately. Um, and on your second um, point, 
it is good to familiarize yourself with, um, um, with, with companies that you are targeting and that you are researching and that you're considering um, adding onto your portfolio. And um, there's no better place to start than with the companies you are interacting with on a daily basis. Um, understand their business. A um, question here from Lorato, which, and I'm a, a technological moron. So I hope one of the three of you knows a little bit about this. Um, Lorato Moloko sent us a, an email saying she's been looking at trading software. Um, however, I would like to get expert advice on which one to go to. I'm looking at trading in Forex and, equ or Forex and equities. What, what, what is this, trading software? What is it? Okay, I think what Slorato is talking about is technical analysis software. Okay. All right, so mm -hmm. analyzing charts using various models. It may be as simple as a moving average, which so is. What is the, a moving average? All right, it's an average share price over the last, say, 20 days. Okay. So that's a rolling chart. So you, get, you can actually get software that you. Uh, how did. Yeah, you can He's buy. Yeah. Okay, you, you you have several sources for this software. You can buy off-the-shelf packages. Mm -hmm. There are companies that go around marketing this software and give you access to where you can download the data because the software is no use without the data. And then they will give you training on that software, and that is supposed to give you buy and sell signals. You still need to interpret it. Okay, wait, hang on. We, we need to go to a break, but I want to come back to this particular point because now suddenly I, who am interested in online trading, am suddenly going, oh no, geez, so I need to do that. Do you really need to do all of that? We're talking about online share trading uh, this evening. We'll be back with you in just a moment.